Spooky Girl Con. Welcome to our Hobbit Day celebration. Um, before we get started, let's do some quick intros. Uh, I'm Alyssa Prime, captain of the Twitch team, she, her pronouns, and today we all are also going to share who in the fellowship uh, we most identify with. And um, I really should have thought about this a little bit sooner. It's Emerald is the one that came up with this, so shout out to Emerald. Um, I think I would probably go with Pippin because in any situation I am in, I take it a little bit less seriously than I should. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and just go this way to Janae. Hello, I'm Janae. I am also part of the Twitch team, pronouns she, her, and I guess the person or the hobbit person. The character that I most identify with, I guess, in the fellowship would probably be Sam. He's just so nice. Oh, Aww, Sam. I like it. Yes. He's the best. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next is Christina. Okay, so I'm Christina, pronouns she or they, and I'm a current exhibitor services manager transitioning to Twitch team. And I am going to have to, I thought about this, I think it would be somewhere a toss up between one of the hobbits of, of like the Baggins family, or it would be Aragorn just because uh, he's the one going around collecting everybody at the beginning. And I feel like I would probably be the one to be like, where is everybody? <laughs> We've got to go. So I, I can see that. So I'll pick that. Nice. Love that. All right, Tina. Hey guys, I'm Tina Burns. I'm the social media manager with Geek Girl Con, uh, pronouns she, her. Um, I took a little quiz while we were talking about this and it gave me Gandalf. 90% accuracy for connecting with Gandalf. Something about, I don't know, kindness and bravery and things like that. But the thing that stood out to me was that I like pointy hats and pipe weeds. So, <laughs> I mean. Perfect. Like anyway. That's awesome. At least it's not like the beard. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a face there, so good, good on that. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, last but certainly not least, Emerald. That's me. Hello, I'm Emerald. I'm a social media specialist at Geek Girl Con, and pronouns she, her. My uh, fellowship person that I feel like I'm most like is Mary, because he's just like... But like a good balance of like fun loving hobbit times, but still like yo, stuff gets serious sometimes. You can't be all fun and games all the time. And I feel like I'm pretty silly, but I'm also like no one to not be silly. So. Nice. Awesome. I love all I'm I'm very surprised we all picked different characters. I thought we were all gonna pick Sam. We just made a couple more and then <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be photo, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> it's true. Um, okay, so today, like we said, we are celebrating Hobbit Day. We are celebrating just a day early. It's actually September 22nd, which if you didn't know, is both Bilbo and Frodo's birthday. So happy birthday of Frodo and Bilbo. I don't know how old they'd be turning. A thousand and eleven dieth, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we can have Hobbit Day, and what about Second Hobbit Day? Second Hobbit Day! Love it. <laughs> um, so we're celebrating today by cooking up a glorious Hobbit Day feast using recipes from an unexpected cookbook. The unofficial book of Hobbit cookery by Chris Rachel Osland. Oh, that's a, there you go. You can see that better now. Oh, 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 so many copies. <laughs> Um, as everybody already knows, a <laughs> hobbit's day consists of seven meals. Can you guys guess all the seven meals now that we've cooked some of those meals? Breakfast, second breakfast, eleven Z's, afternoon tea, supper, dinner. Is that seven? That's six. Dinner, supper, dinner, that's six. Oh, it's I don't know what the other one is. Midnight snack. Oh, that's a good one. Close. <laughs> It's luncheon. Oh. Of course. Don't eat luncheon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're actually going to show you how to make meals um, for each of those. Not each of those. There's only five of us, so we're doing five of those meals. 
Um, but it should be good anyway. I'm excited. I'm the only one who has seen all of the videos. And <laughs> I can just say in advance, you are all in for a treat. Watch out, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> We're treat. coming for oh your God. job. <laughs> I'm so excited. Me too. Um, and yeah. now also I have to talk about it. We are doing a 500 follower giveaway. Very exciting. Um, we are giving away a Geek Girl Con swag bag to one lucky viewer. And we'll keep reminding you of you this today. Um, you will get a Geek Girl Con t-shirt. And I can show you the design right here. Oh, that's upside down. There you go. <laughs> so you'll get a t-shirt with this amazing design. Plus an assortment of other awesome goodies. So in order to enter into the competition today, all you have to do is follow us on Twitch and enter the keyword into chat, which is we wants it, one word. You can see it down below this way. Um, put that in chat and uh, we will select a winner at the end of the stream. We'll keep reminding you as people come in. Um, but yeah, definitely don't sleep on this opportunity because it's going to be sweet. Um, okay, so are we ready for our first video? Heck yeah. So ready. <laughs> All right. So we are going to go in order of a Hobbit's Day, which means we're starting out with breakfast. All right. Let's see if I can okay. attempt this. Here we go. Welcome to my hobbit hole. You're just in time for breakfast. Today I'm making a scrumptious recipe not even an elven queen could resist. A bacon and mushroom hash. This super easy, super quick recipe is the perfect way to start out any hobbit's morning. So let's get started. To make this recipe, you'll need a couple of things that you can find easily around your house. Eight slices of bacon, three cups leftover baked potatoes, diced and peeled, two cups diced mushrooms, one diced onion, one minced garlic clove, or two, two teaspoons coarse salt, half a teaspoon fresh ground pepper, one teaspoon of fresh herbs like chives, basil, or king's foil. What's that doing in here? That's a weed. Start off by cooking your bacon in a sturdy cast iron skillet. I recommend dwarven made. Once you have nice, crispy bacon, pull it out and place it on some paper towels to cool. With all that delicious bacon grease still in the pan, turn down the heat to medium and add your diced onion. Cook for two to three minutes or until translucent. Add your minced garlic, a touch of salt and pepper, and your diced mushrooms. Once cooked through, add your potatoes and crumble in that bacon. Mix it all up and press firmly to ensure you get a nice crust on your potatoes. Let that sit in the pan uninterrupted for 10 minutes. Just enough time for a nice cup of tea. If you've used enough bacon grease, your hash should slide nicely out of the pan and onto a plate. Sprinkle on your herbs and you're ready to eat. 
Mmm. Mmm. Breakfast is served. Let's take a bite. Mmm. The saltiness of the bacon, the crunchiness of the crust, the f soft, fluffy potatoes. No better way to start off your morning. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go get ready for second breakfast. All right, did I give everyone a time to finish the video? <laughs> there we go, breakfast. The most important meal of the day. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was, that was so, so good. good. I'm so hungry. I am in <laughs> awe of this video. Aww. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing to show, but it was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> the presentation was fantastic, too. Like on the end, it just looked very, very delicious. <laughs> it was good, actually. Um, I. We'll say that um, the nice thing about a hash, which I didn't mention in the video and I should have, is, is like you're really supposed to just kind of throw in what you ate the night before. So it's supposed to be kind of like your leftovers. Um, so it's supposed oh. to be like this really quick and easy thing that you can do that will still give you a nice hearty start to your day. Um, we threw on a fried egg, which was delicious, some avocado. You could throw in like some I thought it would be really fun with like salsa or sour cream like uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you can kind of dress it up if you would like <laughs> so you can customize it pretty easily absolutely yes yeah so should we oh. should we talk a little bit like about your experiences with it now or should we save like to talk about everybody's all at once at the end oh no let's let's talk about each one now okay awesome sounds mm -hmm. good so what was your favorite part then? Eating it. That's fair. <laughs> that was a trick question. Gotcha. <laughs> second favorite part. Uh, uh, no, I think, I mean, it's such an easy thing where you kind of just, it's like a, you throw it all into a pot, right? And so it's really simple. Um, the My favorite part would probably be cooking the bacon because it makes your whole house smell yeah. delicious and amazing. Um, my least favorite part, and I didn't show this on the video, maybe we should have done like a blooper reel, but it's supposed <laughs> to slide out of the pan really easily. Mine actually got a little bit burnt on the bottom, so when we tried to like flip it, which was a two-person job, by the way, um, it kind of, a lot of it stuck to the pan, some of it kind of fell all over the place, so it wasn't the most graceful process. I think next time I would probably just scoop it out and not worry about the presentation so much uh, but yeah but it tasted really good and you know there's four of us living in this house and it lasted us two days so that was awesome nice, mm -hmm. nice. my question is where'd you get the tiki mug oh there's this amazing website called geeky tiki's they have <laughs> all kinds of fandom tiki cups that you can order they're fantastic they've got marvel characters they've got i think they've got like sailor moon and yeah it's fat it's fantastic website definitely check it out not sponsored yeah. <laughs> do you prefer sweet or savory breakfasts or like why did you pick this one uh honestly i am not a chef at all so I really was just going for something that looked uh, easy. That video begs to differ, though. <laughs> it's all in <laughs> <Yeah>. post-production. <laughs> um, so really, honestly, I was just trying to pick something that looked easy. And I do tend to like savory breakfast over sweet. Sweet breakfast is kind of put me in a coma sometimes and makes me make me like not accomplish anything in the day. So something like this would be something I would prefer to eat over like a stack of pancakes or whatnot. How about everybody else? What's your take on breakfast? Sweet or savory? Oh, I like mostly savory. Maybe a little bit of savory. Sweet. Yeah. Savory. Yeah, it depends on my mood. It's like if I have stuff to get done, I, I prefer the savory breakfast because I do feel like, you know, you get the protein and other things just mixed in there to get more energy. But if I'm just going to lounge around and be lazy, a sweet breakfast is really good. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I can do yeah. the sugar coma. <laughs> yeah I don't like I I really like sweets so I always think that I'm a sweet breakfast person but every time I have a sweet breakfast I'm like 
no, you know what? I really just wanted bacon and eggs and like um, hash browns. And then I regret yeah. it. <laughs> fair, very fair. I usually take a bite of the sweet from my husband's plate. So I get my savory oh. and then that bite of sweet mm -hmm. and then I'm good. That's the way to do it. You got to go to brunch with multiple people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Can you share? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want sweet. I want a little sweet, but not enough to like make a sweet breakfast, really. Yes, exactly. It's family style dessert or family style breakfast. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we should uh, uh, normalize having dessert for breakfast. Also, Like having your breakfast and then also having breakfast dessert. <laughs> Yeah, I can I'm, definitely get I'm down for that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You heard it here first, like folks. Just a little tiny, yeah. like, yeah. shuffle. Yeah, <laughs> that just tastes like pancakes. Yeah, <laughs> just like a tiny pancake or waffle or something. Yeah. Like, that would be <laughs> awesome. That would be one strawberry on top and mm. some, like, drizzle of something. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, guys, it says mimosas. Oh, also uh, mimosas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, as a reminder, everybody, if you want to enter to win our amazing Geek Girl Con swag bag, enter in We Wants It into chat and we will pick a winner at the end. All right, have we are we ready for the next one? Second breakfast, <laughs> Tina. Yeah, good. Tina, you want to do a little teaser? Let us know what we're gonna watch. <laughs> Um, honestly, I thought it was 11 Z's, and you'll hear me say that in the video, so obviously I was wrong. Oh um, I I had intended on uh, taping it when my roommate's son was here, and he's this adorable little kid with this crazy, crazy curly hair, so I was going to have my own little hobbit. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't in hindsight, because you'll see the recipe is kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, just, I guess, roll it, and what? then I'll talk about it afterwards. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi, geeks. I'm Tina Burns. I'm the social media manager with Geek Girl Con. And today I'm making mushroom, beef, and onion hand pies. I don't know why I thought this would be the recipe I was going to make, other than I really, it sounded good. Um, it's under the 11 Z's category. Um, it's kind of complicated. So you're mostly going to see, I've already prepped. I've made a lot of things ahead of time and um, we're just going to have fun today. Okay. Okay. So as you can see here, I've got all the um, stuffing ingredients prepped and out of the packages. So we are working with um, ground beef, Onions, the recipe calls for a yellow, but I had a red on hand, so I used that. Uh, fresh garlic, minced six cloves, so this is gonna be spicy. These are um, Baby Bella mushrooms. Uh, it calls for rosemary and sage. I went ahead and got some fresh herbs because I like those a little bit better. <clears throat> and I tossed in a little thyme as well, so I tend to mix up recipes versus follow, follow them straight on. Um, so fresh herbs. I did happen to make some bacon yesterday. It calls for butter or bacon grease. Uh, so I saved some of the bacon grease to make this today. And I'm just gonna start cooking and we'll go from there. Thanks. Next up, we take the bacon fat and melt it in a warm pan. Um, this has been heating up for just a few seconds on medium. I'm gonna get that melted in the pan stir it around and add the onions um, to the pan. Okay, the onions have been sauteing for about five minutes. Um, these red ones don't really get super translucent, so I just mostly wanted them to be soft. I added the mushrooms, mixed them in, and to make sure it was all coated with the bacon grease that was in there. 
And we're just gonna keep adding the rest of the ingredients. This is the six garlic cloves minced. Mix that in. And here you just wanna make sure you've got even distribution for all the ingredients. Next up come the herbs. So this is rosemary, thyme, and fresh sage. I chopped those up pretty fine. I oftentimes don't really measure uh, as I should when I'm following a recipe, so that was pepper. Um, here's salt. We're also adding fennel and paprika. I did measure those. I didn't want to get too crazy with this very specific recipe. And again, just make sure um, you're mixing everything so that it's evenly coated. The heat will help the aromatics kind of bloom. And we're just gonna let this cook down a little bit for a few minutes. This can be a vegan or non-vegan meal. So I am going to remove the mushrooms and herbs from the pan uh, to cook the meat. Then this happened. Thankfully it was just a momentary heat so I was able to empty out the pan and get it ready for the next step. Next up we're gonna saute some meat. So I spread it around to make it a little bit uh, you know more contact on the pan that way it'll cook a little bit faster and I show you really briefly my favorite tool here. This just separates the meat as it cooks and helps uh, really make it fine. Next up, you add the mushroom and herb mixture back in, mix it in as thoroughly as possible and let it cook for a few minutes just to meld the flavors. And then you're gonna take it off the heat and let it cool while we prepare the short crust for the hand pies. At this point, it smelled wonderful, so I grabbed a little bite just to make sure that the smell matched the taste and we were all good. Next up is making the outside, the short crust sections. I had challenges rolling this, as you'll see in a second, but um, my advice would be if you could make it day of, definitely do. Keeping it in the fridge um, gets the butter solids a little bit more solid than I needed them to be to roll it out. Once the pie crust is rolled out, it'll be about an eighth of an inch thick. The recipe calls for using a four inch cookie cutter and I just happen to have one. The recipe should make approximately 12 four inch circles. I was able to get 11 out of this. So we'll have five pies and one half pie. The first hand pie I made off camera, just wanted to make sure I could get it to stick together and look halfway decent. The filling is about a two tablespoon portion of meat. I found it much easier to um, 
use the egg wash that I'm going to use on top of it um, before I put the filling in. That way the two crusts kind of melded together as I was putting it together. Final step is putting the egg wash onto the short crust. One of the things you want to be careful about is remembering that egg wash browns the top of your short crust. So when you consider if the pie crust is done or not, cook it a little bit longer because that browning is added, especially from the egg wash. All right, Tina, those were gorgeous. How did they taste? Uh, first of all, I have always wanted to like do some kind of cooking show. And mostly it was like when I worked with all these single kids, they're like, I can't make food. I was like, yeah, you can totally do it. I'll show you. I no. After doing this after doing this video, I don't I don't know that this is for me. But um they tasted really great. I was a little worried because they had mushrooms and people in my house are kind of like anti-mushroom, but there was so much flavor in there and a ridiculous amount of paprika, you could barely even tell that there was any other flavors. Um they are considered hand pies. Um I think also another word for a modern day chef would be like a pasty, P-A-S-T-Y, pasty. Um, funny enough, so we had them for dinner. I made gravy to go with it. Um, and then my roommate took one to work because it's supposed to be this adventure. You take it with, you make these, you take it with you. And he came back the next day and he was like, that was amazing room temperature. So the recipe worked out. <laughs> Either way, everybody liked them. Even people who didn't like mushrooms. Um, I think I talked a little bit about what my little caveats would be for the recipe. Um, definitely the short crust was <clears throat> not something I'd worked with before. I'd made flaky crust a ton, but that short crust gets real, um, it's not tough, but it's just, you know, not as pliable as you would get from a flaky crust. Um, I think the only other thing, the only thing I want to complain about is the recipe book, the font is like a serif font. So it's curvy and it's kind of really small. So I was trying to read it and cook at the same time. I think that's my biggest complaint about the whole thing. But it was a great experience. I was happy to make it. Um, yeah, any questions? All so, I know is that that was the video, or that was the video I could smell. Like I, those those fresh herbs and spices. Like I was like, oh, I'm drooling. <laughs> right, and the sizzle of the onions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. And you may not feel like you can be a like a cooking show host, but that food photography was like, mm. like that was yes. like, oh. Presentation again. iPhone portrait mode <laughs> is your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so Tina, it, uh, based on the like some of the tools and stuff that you had, like that cool like meat thingy, <laughs> it I kind of got the sense that you you enjoy cooking or you cook often. Is that true? I I do. Yeah, I did have a lot of tools. Those are not the every everyday average home cook tools set. Um, I do enjoy cooking. Um, I normally, like I said, I really don't follow recipes. Um, so I, I was very surprised that I um, measured anything at that point. Um, but yeah, I do cook. I, I like kitchen tools. 
Nice. I like to give kitchen tools too. So if I come over to your house and try to cook and you're missing something, you might get it for Christmas. So. Aww, <laughs> that's so sweet. That's very thoughtful. And what is oh, that I cool don't... meat plunger thingy? Um, honestly, I don't know what it's called. <clears throat> it's from Pampered Chef. <laughs> um, I've had it. I've had two. So this is my second one. Um, but it just it works for all kind of ground meats and just really makes them fine. Um, I could probably find out what it looks like. Pampered Chef meat, something or other, and you'll find it, I'm sure. <laughs> Google. Yeah, it was real cool. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. <clears throat> oh, oh, I did have a question for Tina. Yes. The, the number of garlic cloves, it was six that you put in. Was that the amount that the recipe called for? Or did the recipe call for three? And you're like, no, six. <laughs> no, it was six. I mean, I am I like garlic. So I will always uh, err on the side of more. Um, people in my house don't. But that was recipe. But honestly, the amount of paprika kind of covered any other flavor. Um, in fact, if I made them again, I would probably put less paprika or maybe like a smoky Hungarian one, something with a little bit more um, dimension that was just like paprika kind of thing. So, Do you think you could use other? You... Oh, sorry, Janae, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm glad you fall into the more garlic. Yeah, more garlic. Better. Garlic is better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Just want to say really quick, thanks, Dagonis, Dagonicus. Sorry, that was terrible for the sub, and welcome to the channel. Um, as a reminder for everybody, we are still doing a giveaway. If you want to win the Geek Girl Con swag bag, um, go ahead and put We Wants It in chat. You can see down below, right above our logo, is the exact phrase that you want to put. Don't put any exclamation points or anything like that. Just that one word will enter you into the competition and we will announce it, the winner at the end. Um, more questions for Tina. Tina, did you enjoy this experience? I did enjoy the experience. Um, there was so many other things in there, but like I said, I like a savory breakfast. So something like that I could eat for breakfast or lunch or dinner. Um, I didn't realize it was going to be as complicated as it was. I made the short crust the day before. <laughs> Um, and I should have just made it the day of, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I think it would be amazing. Like I, as I was making it, I was like, okay, this is how I would make it next time. If you made a pot roast the night before, and then you had all these leftovers, so you had the roasted meat, you had the stuff to make the gravy and then all of that stuff into the pie and then took it with you on the adventure. I think that would be my my second try. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then if you have, have a more question. leftovers, you could make a hash. Exactly. Yes. Hash and breakfast. Take right. these with you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Did you have any problems with the uh, like edges and not like if with any stuff leaking <laughs> out? Or? Seriously, I said it in the video, but um, the cr I don't know. Again, it's first time I worked with short crust, so I'm not sure what it was. Somebody who's a baker, maybe tell me. But I ended up having to egg wash all of the edges. So the inside, put the filling, and then the two crusts would stick because the egg wash was there. And then the egg wash on top because there was no, there was zero moisture. No, they were not melding together. So I kind of went back to the one that I like first made a couple and just kind of snuck in a little bit of egg wash to make sure that it didn't. But also the filling was not... Um, very greasy, so there was not a lot of things to like come out of it. So, awesome. yeah, well, they it's looked great. delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look so good. All My right. hand is okay, by the way. I was just gonna ask, yeah, how's your hand? hand? <laughs> like behind that, when the director. Like I was like, why is this? What's happening? Oh my god, I thought I was gonna die. That was a fantastic cut in the middle. It was, <laughs> it was a surprise. I liked it. It was very like, dramatic. Yeah. So good. Good. thanks for the opportunity. It was great. <laughs> All right, are we ready for our next video? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Next up is Eleven Z's. Christina made honey cakes. Christina, you want to give us a quick intro? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, it is a, a sweet little mini cake that is 
very tasty, and I I picked. Should I just say like why I picked? That? I don't yeah, know what ahead. to do in an intro. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I pretty much picked that because I'm better baker than a cook. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'm not like excellent at either, but I figured I'd go for something that just sounded you know cute and like um relaxing to make and and just a sweet treat. So and something that would be shareable. So I yeah so. Uh, I, I enjoyed making it. And I give everyone a preface that this was my first time working in Lightworks. So <laughs> um, making a video mm -hmm. to get in there. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's roll the clip. Hi, everyone. This is Christina. And my Hobbit Day baking adventure will be honey cakes. According to the recipe, Tolkien said the Shire was based on nostalgic memories of his childhood, and these honey cakes are inspired by late Victorian recipes for twice-baked cakes. The recipe says that the second baking hardens the honey glaze in place while firming up the crust, giving them a moist, tender interior and a sweet, crunchy exterior. Here's a quick overview of the ingredients you'll need to make this recipe. 1 and 3 quarter cups all-purpose flour, or 220 grams, 1 and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a cup or 115 grams of room temperature butter, a half a cup or 85 grams of dried blueberries or currants. I used blueberries in this case because I couldn't find currants where I was looking. The zest of one lemon, 3 quarters cup or 200 milliliters of milk, one egg, three quarters cup or 255 grams of honey, plus another quarter cup or 85 grams of honey reserved. I found at the end that I wanted a little more in the reserve honey, so I guess this is per taste. And finally, 10 to 12 candied almonds for decoration. I ended up using maple butter almonds, which are delicious, and I will be buying them just as a snack, too. I didn't want to deal with the hassle of opening and prepping ingredients while I was making the video, so I just put everything into bowls in advance. First, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. While the oven heats up, whisk together your flour, baking powder, and salt. I used the biggest bowl that I had for this because everything else is going to end up in this bowl. Next, you'll mix the butter into the flour blend until you achieve a crumbly meal. Once it looks like gravel, that's what they said, add the lemon zest and the blueberries. Make sure it's all well blended. I promise that I did blend it better than what you see here. In another bowl, beat the milk, egg, and 3 quarters cup honey until you get a nice sloppy mess. Next, the recipe says to pour that into the crumbly flour blend and mix it until the batter is just barely free of lumps. No need to overwork it or else you'll burst the blueberries. Make sure you do a good job buttering the muffin pan wells because you'll need that in order to easily slide the cakes out of the pan. All right, now you scoop about a third a cup of the batter into each of the muffin pan wells. For the first baking, you'll leave the cakes in the 400 degree oven for 12 minutes. Oh, and if your oven doesn't heat things very evenly, which is the case with mine, just go ahead and take them out while they're baking and flip them around. They'll be ready to take out of the oven when the tops feel solid, but a toothpick stuck in the center comes out a little sticky. In my case, the tops didn't exactly feel as solid as I would have expected, but the toothpick did come out just barely sticky still, so I decided to take them out at this point. You might notice at this point that I sort of flipped them upside down, which wasn't in the instructions, but I thought it looked a little cuter this way, and certainly more stable. So I went against the mold a little bit, which I only learned later when I looked up pictures of honey cakes and realized that I did things a little bit differently. 
Arrange the cakes one inch apart on a greased baking sheet or, if you're like me, on parchment paper. Gently press a candied almond, or a plain one if you prefer, into the middle of each honey cake. Next, generously drizzle the rest of your honey on top of the cakes, the honey that you set aside earlier. It helps to heat your honey in the microwave for 15 to 20 seconds to thin it out. Our microwave's a little extra, so I only needed to do it for about 10 seconds. Use enough to coat the top and let it drip down the sides. This creates a nice crispy glaze on your honey cakes. Once they're decorated with an almond crown and drizzled in sweetness, let the honey cakes sit for at least five minutes so the honey can soak in. I did end up using a little extra honey just to make sure that everything got coated completely. Now put the baking sheet back in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes or until the tops are a deep golden honey brown. I actually had to keep it in the oven a little longer than this so definitely just keep an eye on it and see what works for you. So here is my final product. I thought it turned out pretty well, especially for being a first time making it. The recipe recommends that you try these fresh from the oven with a bit of jam and clotted cream and says that they're also really great the next day when the crust is nice and crispy and the interior is still soft and moist. I would agree with this assessment. I tried it with some blackberry jam. It was very tasty and I did try them the next day and I can confirm that the crispy exterior with the soft interior is fantastic. This recipe was fun to make and pretty straightforward, so I definitely would recommend it as an addition to your Hobbit Day 11s or afternoon tea, and I hope that you'll all give it a try. Hi everyone, this is Christina. All right, Christina, those looked amazing. <laughs> oh they were very, ta very tasty. <laughs> I, this one I, I feel like it. is straight out of like the Great British Baking Show. Like they're just oh, yeah, it was so, like doggy bob. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're so cute and so British. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they were all identical. Uniform. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did I an think, okay rating. <laughs> Except they weren't they weren't evenly baked because I just got to find out that my oven does not hate things very evenly at all. Oh, I was like, no. oh, the ones in the back are really getting darker than the others. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I think we found our breakfast dessert, so yes. 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 Star baker. That. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see uh, how the, the showstopper goes or whatever yeah. <laughs> that's right it's anybody's yeah. game now yeah. <laughs> um have you ever made anything similar to this before uh not not exactly like this no this was my first time making um like something like the twice baked type of thing with the um with the the honey glaze on it and but i liked doing it it's a lot of fun to make um and you know it's it like yeah i'm i have a big sweet tooth like i'm not sure about the breakfast debate i i still think savory wins in that area but i definitely wanted to make something sweet uh and it just had a really good hobbity feeling to me like honey cakes just seemed perfect for i could just see a hobbit munching on a honey cake so it seemed really good for that. i definitely could see like a hobbit just like pulling like a honey cake out of their pocket <laughs> Like, That'd be so yeah. sticky. <laughs> Hopefully they haven't so wrapped it something. And then just being like, oh, oh well, <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, is there anything you see, you're getting? Oh, go ahead. Christina. You're getting a lot of comments in the chat about your uh, narration. You have yes. a voice for putting. It says your voice is so calming, and then somebody else said, "Do or do the jump." Said, "Yeah, great narration." <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> well, that is very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, your narration was awesome. And then with the music, too, I was like, mm, maybe I'll fall asleep. Like, I was getting very, you said you were aiming for calming. So I was getting very, like, calming, like, 
elfin vibes and it was awesome awesome <laughs> yeah that, that was something i was looking forward to it was just like making something that was very chill <laughs> i just wanted a very chill video and it, i think at least that part i got like there were a lot of things i did not know how to do in lightworks when i was putting it together but i'm glad that i managed to like get that part it looks, yeah, it looks it flawless yeah. where did you find that font oh that was a free font um i i should credit that somewhere um it was uh i will i will let you know i can put it in chat as soon as i find it but i yeah it was it was a free font online yeah it looked great it was like perfect <laughs> <laughs> i feel so relaxed now mm -hmm. <laughs> my other question is how how quickly did they go mm. like do you still have some are they gone what time do I come over? We have a couple, like, because they are, like, that is the thing is that they are really sweet, like, really, really sweet. So it's, uh, and that might be because the extra honey that I added, I would say that if people don't want them super sweet, maybe don't do that. I wasn't sure if I was going to need it because I, I didn't know if I had enough coverage. So that's why I added a little extra. Um, but yeah, like they, they'll, they'll go slowly because of that, I think, because you don't want to eat too much at once. Awesome. Any other questions for Christina? I can't remember if you said or not, but what did you have a certain kind of honey that you used or a favorite kind of honey that you might use next time you make it? So that's actually, that's a good question. Um, I, I used just like a, for this one, I, because it was my first time making it, I just used like Costco honey, but honestly I would use um, probably, we buy honey from um, a local um, honey maker or, or I guess beekeeper that uh, it's called Urban Honey, I think yeah. is the name of it. And they <laughs> make extremely good honey that I would recommend for this recipe. So I'll give a little Seattle local plug there. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, it's that time again where I remind everybody to enter into the competition. We want it is the keyword. Get yourself a swag bag. All right. So we've gone through breakfast, second breakfast, and elevensies. Nobody did a luncheon video because who needs lunch when you have all this delicious yeah. food? <laughs> Next up is afternoon tea. Emerald has created some delicious plum heavies, heavies, heavies. Who knows? Maybe it'll be resolved in the video. Maybe. It won't, <laughs> it won't be. Um, any, any intro you want to give us? A little spoiler? A little teaser? Sure. Um, yeah, plum heavies. It's spelled heavies, but when I started making them, I was like, in my head thinking heavies and I was like that's probably not a very appetizing name so maybe I'll, we'll call them heavies there were a lot of uh, recipes I wanted to do and I just chose that one because there weren't very many ingredients and I had all of them so <laughs> I just didn't have to go shopping which was awesome and I have my hobbit themed mug here nice and this is something that uh, will go very well with your nice cup of tea for afternoon tea. So, <laughs> awesome. Let's roll a video. In a world where you're always hungry, you'll expect. Oh, we're going to be making an afternoon tea snack plum heavies? Heavies. Whatever these are. Plum heavies. Heavies? Heavies, probably. Because look at this simple ingredient list. I have all of that. Bonus points for using the word ubiquitous. Look at these ingredients. Wow. Look at that room temperature butter. Oh boy. Now, let's add some sugar. Let's add some cinnamon. And let's add some milk. Let's pretend I stirred all that by hand in this bowl. Let's add a dash of cardamom, because that's fun. Now let's watch me struggle to film this and stir one-handed. Here's some flour. I forgot to film me mixing and kneading it in. Whoops. Oh well. Plums! First, we're gonna rinse the plums. Then... 
we're going to mince the plums. Rinse them and mince them. Thanks, Mom, for being the hands in this part of the video and demonstrating how to mince plums. From what I understand from my zero research, um, mincing is just cutting into smallish chunks. So here are our smallish chunks, but they're not small enough. So let's switch to a bigger knife. Remember to keep your thumb tucked in so you don't cut it off. You know what? Let's just scoop all this into the food processor. See what happens. Maybe that'll give us a nice mince. Here we go. Ooh, it's getting kind of gloopy. Wait, what? Ugh. Well, that's unclear. Well, here's our minced plums mixed in with our batters. And they're fresh plums, not dried plums. But they'll still be delicious. Let's roll this dough out while we think about how important it is to read the whole recipe before you start. Here's what it looks like, about a quarter inch thick. And we're using this biscuit cutter to cut out some cookie circles. Then covering them with the egg wash we made. And then sprinkling the tops of them with some sugar to add it that extra sweetness. Wait, 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 wait. Egg wash, you said? Oh, yeah, that's right. This optional egg wash, ooh, try cracking an egg with one hand. It is challenging. It's just one egg and one tablespoon of water whisked together and then brushed on top of our plum heavies, plum heavies, whatever. Here's our second batch, getting ready to go on the tray. They sure do look purty, especially after you put that egg wash on and they're shining with the sugar. They seem like they're going to be sort of a combination of a cookie, cakey, biscuit scone type of delicious snack. So I'm excited to see how they'll turn out. Ooh, look how shiny. I left one without an egg wash just to see what the difference was. Here's a nice mess I made. But look at those. They're so pretty. Into the oven they go. Oh boy. I had to leave them in the oven a little longer, but here they come. The big reveal. These plum heavies weren't as sweet as I was expecting. Definitely not like cookies. But that just makes them even better to snack on throughout the day. Breakfast, second breakfast, afternoon tea, elevensies. A good snack for any time. Hmm, what I like best about this plum heavy heavy recipe is its simple ingredients and how adaptable it is to just what you might have on hand at home. I also like that they aren't super duper sweet, which just meant I could have more of this unexpected treat. Mm. So it's obvious that Emerald has a future career in food, TV, <laughs> and probably <laughs> comedy also. <laughs> Very, very no. entertaining. It was delightful. <laughs> well, I started out trying to be all calming and soothing, but I just felt like I, I could pull it off like Christina could. I was like, it sounded <laughs> silly. <laughs> Uh, it's like a drink and at the first joke I almost spit it out I was like this is pure <laughs> emerald it was great, great. it was so <laughs> good absolutely so was it okay when you used the uh the fresh plum I'm still unclear on if like which one I was supposed to do because the recipe just says minced plums but then let's see let me read the offending passage says um if, if you're feeling traditional they can be made with whatever leftover dough you have so i like that um spiked with whatever dried fruit is handy chopped raisins and currants were just as popular as plops so i'm like mm, it seems like you're saying you should be using dried fruit but then the ingredient list just says plums so but dried plums are prunes, so that makes it sound like right. something your grandma would eat. Yeah, that sounds like a, a, a good fiber like fiber snack. <laughs> Which maybe you need. That's fine. 
Yeah, stay regular yeah, it was, somehow. It was it was unclear. Um, so yeah, who knows? They they did turn out fine. They turned out really good. Yeah, and actually, I think that with dry, it wouldn't have been as kind of moist, and they were already kind of on the dry side. So I feel like it wouldn't have been as good. I have one, so um, what two left? Like this. Oh. So, so it's basically like a cookie scone? It's like cookie a cookie scone. scone. Yeah, yeah, it's like a scone shaped like a circle. It's a circle. Because, yeah, I, I, when I tried my first one, I was like, dis I was like confused and disappointed because I thought I was expecting cookie. And then, but then I was like, oh, wait, actually, this is delicious. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not super sweet, which is great. Um, cause then you can need a bunch of them. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. So it's just about managing your expectations. Mm. <laughs> what, what sort of tea do you think would go well with the plum heavies or heavies? Um, you know, that's a great question. I think any kind of tea, uh, your class, I don't really like kind of just like regular black tea. So I would go with some kind of like fruit tea that might go with the like plum, bring out those plum flavors. Um, you could also probably have it with any sort of like cider or anything that has like those cinnamony kind of undertones because that would like go nice with it too. And again, you could put jam on them if you wanted it or honey. If you, if you hadn't had enough honey with the honey cakes, yeah. I'll put a little honey on there, you know, cause it did say that like, um, if you leave them out for too long, they're going to get like a little hard and stuff, but I'm like, they seem fine to me. And I made them like four days ago. This is the last one, by the way. So <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> and I did take them into, uh, to one of my jobs right now and I got all positive reviews. So yay. Nice. Excellent. Did you make, did you make these at your mom's house? I did. Yeah, we lived together. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't just call her to be like, Ma, Mom, come over. I need somebody else so I can film some hands. The, <laughs> the model needed. <laughs> the cutting board under the countertop was, I think, one of my favorite parts. That's so awesome. Well, it's cool. Yeah, it just slides out and then the entire thing can come out so you can watch it. Just great. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Well, great job, Emerald. Those look delicious. Mm. We have just one more video left. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. No pressure. No pressure. Before oh, no. we show it, though, we I want to know from chat, what did you think about this video? This is the first time we've ever attempted anything like this. Should we do it again? And if we should do it again, what other geeky cookbook do you know of that you want to see us try recipes for? So let us know in the chat. We'll read those out in a little bit. Janae, you want to give us a little bit of a teaser of what we're about to see? Okay, yes. Um, I made a rustic apple tart, which I chose because it's like fall and apples are in season, so I thought that would be a good pick. Um, this was also, I feel like we should have started with mine, so the bar was like pretty low. Now I have to like meet everybody's expectations. So everyone else was so good, because this was my first time trying to use TikTok, and I'm like, I feel like at this age where I'm just like, I don't understand new technology, and I have to, I have to Google everything, so it's very short. Um, We're all this doing this be first time thing because I was the first time I used iMovie. So, oh, that's we're like, what you mean. Okay. We'll, we'll all be fine. It'll yes. be fine. Yes. I, I think we're all learning. exactly. And yeah. I think this is great because now you can go on to TikTok, everybody. You can find Janae's video and you can share with people how to make this delicious uh, apple, rustic apple tart for Hobbit Day, which yes. is actually tomorrow, not today. It's perfect. Yeah. Get this trending. That's right. <laughs> All right. Should we roll the video? And, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. No, let's do it. Let's just go. <laughs> okay, here we go.
Sorry, I let it go a little bit too long. <laughs> I was about to start over. <laughs> that looked delicious. Yeah. It was very good. I was also a little surprised because I made the vegan version. So instead of butter, because I didn't, I was too impatient to let my butter come up to room temperature. So I used coconut oil instead, which I think it turned out pretty well still. Although I would like to try it with butter next time to see if that like adds anything. Mm. That's cool though. We haven't had anything that was vegan or even, I guess we have had some vegetarian, but yeah. So how did it taste? It was very good. The re one review I got was, it was a flavor explosion, in parentheses, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I've never it seen it. Good, and it's good for breakfast, too, if there are leftovers. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. I've never seen, I've had like a fair amount of like apple pie, not many apple tarts, but I love the idea of putting it that different uh, fruit jam at the bottom and then layering on the apples that sounds delicious yeah I think it's also supposed to help the the crust not get so soggy so you avoid a soggy bottom because no, there's an extra I layer <laughs> I did I did like you pretending to be a great <laughs> British breakoff contestant that was, that was awesome, yeah. awesome. <laughs> well done. I have seen in yeah, chat too coming back <laughs> Yay! Yay. I, I love that show. I, I, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I noticed a fellow kitchen gadget girl in you, Janae. Oh, yes. The I rolling thing up. Many, many things. We, we should come to the best. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to just fold over the edges and make it like a galette where you don't even need the pan. You just put it on like a sheet pan or something. Mm -hmm. You probably could have done yeah, the same. Recipe, yeah, the recipe does kind of say more like a galette, but I was she worried has about leakage, so I put it in a pan. Smart. I liked your um, emphatic pointing in that was good. <laughs> yeah. Usage oh. of, of TikTok. I was like, yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah I know where yeah. to look. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out how to do a voiceover, so we got the text instead. <laughs> I appreciate awesome. that though, because I don't watch yeah. I don't watch a lot of TikTok, but when I do, it's usually it t tends to be like on mute. <laughs> I end up seeing a video and I have it on mute, so I very much appreciate a text based video. Yeah. Mm hmm So what was you were just with a different you know video style and that, then that's fine right no I love that we all have kind of our own different flair and take on the assignment because we basically dreamt up this idea and just said make videos everybody and everyone has delivered such unique and awesome things I love every single one of your videos you all did a fabulous job seconded <laughs> yeah it was fun mm -hmm. it was so great Thanks for participating, everyone. Right? Mm -hmm. It was super fun. My only regret is not being able to taste all the food that you all made. Uh, I mean, <laughs> right? Same. And right. I want to like 50 more things. Oh. <laughs> so one last reminder, everyone, and then I'm going to read chat and see what our next suggestions for our next cook book review cook along thing. I'm not sure what to call this segment yet. Um, <laughs> But if you want to enter into the Geek Girl Con swag bag giveaway, uh, one lucky viewer will be uh, selected. All you have to do is put We Wants It in chat. You can see the spelling below. I keep pointing to the wrong thing. Um, put that in chat. That's all you have to do to enter. And we will, we're only mere moments away from announcing a winner. Mere moments. Um, but let's take a look at chat and see what folks said about um, suggestions on the next geeky cookbook. Um, so Alyssa Lena, hi Alyssa, says uh, she has the D and D cocktail book. Ooh. That could be super fun. Do like a little mixology thing. Gazzy Soros recommended Harry Potter. Lots of great Harry Potter recipes out there. I would love to make some butter beer. Ah. Um, let's see. Skyrim cookbook. That could be really cool. Uh, Fallout cookbook. Destiny. Let's see. I, I can any? attest that there are some good Skyrim recipes because my friend did a Skyrim-based uh, 
birthday and she made several delicious things for that and i made something from the same book and it was it was like lavender bread and it was really good so i would, I would Ooh, vote for that. Yes. i could get yeah. into that for sure i wanted to make the lavender lemon bread and the hobbit one so you could try for that <laughs> Yes, and that's a good reminder. If you too want to make delicious recipes based on Hobbiton, Hobbitine, you can get your copy of An Unexpected Cookbook, a the unofficial book of Hobbit Cookery, online at Amazon. I got mine on Amazon. Did you all get yours on Amazon too? Can you find it other places? I think I ordered mine from Emerald City Books. Nice. From okay. me? Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think we're ready to announce our winner nightbot you want to go ahead and tell us who our winner is Drum roll. Oh, hi. oh yeah we're jumping oh yeah just gonna mm -hmm. keep I'm tired drumming. of drumming now. keep going <laughs> you should jump in chat to make the sound like uh Esper Ooh. Magic! Yay! Congratulations, Yay. Esper Magic! Thanks so much for being here. We will message yeah. you on the official Geek Girl Con account and get your deets so we can send you your awesome swag pack. Pew 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 pew. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's do a quick outro. Um, coming up on Thursday, we are playing golf with your friends. Definitely tune into that. Uh, Tuesday, we have our Geek Girl Con book club. We are discussing Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I almost said Pritchett. It's Pratchett. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, don't forget that Geek Girl Conline is coming up in November. Be sure to follow our channel if you're new here so that you can get all the latest updates on what is upcoming, all the cool stuff that we've got programming-wise. Also, I also wanted to give a quick shout-out to, in just a couple weeks, the Geek Girl Con month of Halloween. I'm so excited. <laughs> Halloween is the best. <laughs> we are planning all kinds of spooky and spoopy streams that you will absolutely not want to miss. Um, again, follow us here for more updates, or you can follow us on any one of our social media thingies up here, um, because we will be announcing the schedule very, very soon. Um, thank you, Janae, Christina, Tina, and Emerald for taking part in this amazing stream this was so much fun you are all such talented video creators and cooks who knew yeah, you are oh my god well <laughs> thanks for hosting it was my pleasure thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll see you on thursday good night bye, bye. <laughs>